Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Today's video is all about SFML and how to set it up. This is a refreshed, updated version, a little quicker and a little more straight to the point. So the first thing you want to do is you want to Google SFML and click on the link. It will take you to sfmldev.org. And this is a great place to learn about SFML. There's a lot of content here that you can devour. So I really suggest you do that. But for this video, we're just going to download and set it up. So go ahead and hit download and click the SFML 2.61. Now is a good point to read about this. Basically says that the version you're downloading, either 32-bit or 64-bit, doesn't depend on what version you're running on your operating system, but it's about what version you want to develop for. So I always go with 32-bit because it would allow me to develop for the most common system, which is 32-bit. And then you want to know which version of C++ you have installed. Now, I know I have C++ 17 installed because I installed Visual Studio 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. So just click download. So once you've downloaded your SFML files, they'll pop up as a RAR file. So if you just go ahead and open those, and we'll need a few of these folders. We won't need everything. If you want to check out examples, you can go ahead and do that. But for us, the lib include and bin folders will be enough. So I'm going to hit control C on these, and I'm going to head over to where I created my project. I'm going to create an external folder here, and I'm going to paste everything in here. Once I've done that, I'm going to open my bin folder and control X all of these DLL files and place them with my CPP files. So when you dynamically link something, you always want to make sure your dynamically linked libraries follow your project. And they usually end up here where you have your source files. Once we're done with that, I can remove the bin folder, which is empty now. And I'm going to create a new folder called SFML and place these two files within that. And I just want you to notice if you open the external folder and go into the include, you'll see an SFML subfolder, which then includes all of your header files. But if we go into the library folder, there is no such thing. So I just want you to know that it's nothing weird. Now, the next step is to set this up in Visual Studio. And a great way to find a written version of this tutorial on SFML's homepage itself is to go ahead and go to learn and tutorials. And then you'll find these sections here, which specify how to install and link your projects with SFML for your specific IDE. So for in our case, it's going to be SFML and Visual Studio. And if you click that, it will show you the steps with images, but I'm making the video for you guys. So hopefully that will be enough. So the first step is to right click on your project and go to properties. And from here, we're going to go to C++, expand that, and go ahead and go into general. Now I want you to check the configurations up here. So go ahead and select all configurations and the platform should be Win32 since we downloaded the 32-bit version. And there are two configurations here that we'll work with, debug and release, but we'll start with the stuff that is the same for both of these. That's why we have all configurations. Then you'll see a section called additional include directories, but you click in here. Then I want you to click on this little edit button here. And in here, I want you to type dollar sign and within parentheses solution directory. So solution there external without a left or backward slash, just solution there external and then backward slash SFML backward slash include. There you go. Then it should look like this. And if we evaluate this path and check it against wherever we actually have it. So if I put it right here, you'll see that it goes to the same place. So it goes to my G drive programming projects, SFML link test external SFML, and then include that is within that. So that looks perfect. I'm going to copy this and hit OK. And then I'm going to go to linker and general. And then you'll see another additional library directories. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to paste this. But instead of include, I'm going to say lib and hit OK. And if this additional library directories pops up after that, you don't have to worry about it. This is what's important. So once this is there, you can hit apply. Now we're at the tedious part. We're going to go to linker and input. And I want you to switch this configuration to release now. Make sure that's done. And then hit additional dependencies, the little arrow and edit. And we're going to add a bunch of things here, which I'll link in the description. So I'm going to type them all out and they're going to be in this format. So it's going to be SFML graphics dot lib. 
You can just copy this, paste it, and switch out the graphics for window. Now we're just going to keep doing this for all the libraries I'm going to mention. We have audio, network, and system. And if you were to link these statically, which I'll make a video on a little later, you would do hyphen S as well for the static libraries. But we're doing this dynamically right now. So once you've done these, I want you to copy all of these five. And if I expand this, you'll be able to see all of the libraries here. Hit apply as well. And now switch the configuration to debug and do the same thing. Hit the little arrow and edit and paste all of these in here. And now I want you to do a hyphen D after all of these or hyphen, whatever you call it. So these are the debug libraries of all of these systems. Once you've added that, hit OK and hit apply. And now we can copy this little example application, which just creates a little window from the tutorial page. And we're just going to paste that in here in our code. And don't forget to include the libraries as well. And if this is bugging out for you, make sure to switch this to x86 because otherwise your IDE won't know what SFML is because we've only linked it for the 32-bit version. If you want to link for both, you'll have to download the 64-bit version and then link that here as well. But we're just doing the 32-bit version. So once you hit that and switch it up, it will make it nice here. So we have debug and release both linked. So if you switch that, you'll see that nothing really happens. It will find the libraries for both. But if we stay to debug, we stick to that and we run this, it creates a nice little window for us with a circle inside. So just to recap, download SFML from the homepage, download the 32-bit version for your Visual Studio version, or if you're on a different system, you have the links here as well. Go to Learn, Tutorials, and for your IDE, for more details, open up a project in Visual Studio in this case, right-click your project, Properties, start off by going to C, C++, make sure configuration is set to all configurations, and the platform is the 32-bit or the 64-bit if that's what you've downloaded, but in this case it's the 32-bit. Go to C++ General, add this to the Additional Include Directories field, hit Apply, go to Linker General, add this to the Additional Library Directories field, and hit Apply, and then go to Input, switch your configuration to Release, hit Edit, and add these to this field, hit OK, switch to Debug, add these to this field, hit OK, and hit Apply. Copy this code and include this library and switch it to x86 or x64 if that's what you've linked and hit run. Hopefully this tutorial helped you guys and it was a little more straight to the point. Good luck with the SFML coding. Drop a like, subscribe if you like the content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.